Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, welcome on this third webinar, I think, where we actually introduce you more about the Copernicus uh, incubation program. We're happy to have you here. We see that still some people are trying to log on, so you will hear a couple of beeps. But no problem, no worries. Uh, we will just uh, continue today. My name is Sam Waas, works for uh, Verhaart Master's Innovation. And I'm here together with my colleague. Yeah, I'm Zane Sneaga, and I'll explain some more details later in the presentation uh, about the program. So today the program that we will talk about for about 20 minutes where we will introduce you uh, the program. If you've got questions in the meantime, feel free to use the chat box by the end of the session. We will be able to answer all the different questions. And there's actually time enough after the session to do uh, questions and answers. We will not interrupt the, uh, the, the session for question and answers, otherwise it will be a bit uh, confusing. So let's get started with Copernicus. I assume that most of you know what Copernicus is all about. Um, so I will not explain the whole Copernicus uh, program, but I think it's important to situate the Copernicus incubation uh, program. Copernicus incubation program is actually a funding program that is part of a, of a bigger amount of initiatives like there's the Copernicus Masters, there's the Copernicus Accelerator, there will be the Copernicus uh, Hackathons, and all these are programs to uh, stimulate entrepreneurship, to stimulate startups, um, to actually start using uh, Copernicus uh, data. Now, the difference with the other programs is that the Copernicus uh, incubation is really about incubating uh, startups uh, that already have uh, some very clear ideas. Now, it could also be that people are coming not from the Copernicus program, but there are the business incubation centers from ESA. There is an entrepreneur project. There are non-space incubation programs. So actually, we will welcome all kinds of startups from different kinds of accelerator programs. And I think it's important to mention here that it is not a physical incubator, it's an incubation program which basically in this context means that it's a funding scheme to support the incubation. Indeed. So why do we have the uh, Copernicus uh, incubation program and why does the European Union invest into this program? Well, it's actually clear to increase the number of ventures that make use of space assets. We want space assets to be used. The satellites are there, most of the satellites are there, and now actually we want the, the initiatives to, to start to stimulate, to pick up the data that is available um, to start in new ventures. And of course we want to promote and activate large volumes of incubation and accelerator programs that go uh, within the space scene and also outside of the space scene. So for the agenda today, we had the welcome, we welcomed you already. Uh, quickly, uh, I will introduce the program a bit more in detail, and then we will go into the uh, small details of the application procedure, like how to apply, what are the evaluation criteria, eligible applicants, eligible costs, application templates, and so on. And at the end, as I already mentioned, there is the question and answer session, and just as a quick reminder, use the question and answer session or the Q&A or the I'm sorry, the chat box to actually post uh, your questions uh, already. Also for your information, all, everything that we talk about today is also available on the Copernicus Incubation uh, website, Copernicus EU, uh, Copernicus Incubation E.EU. You will see it in the slides a couple of times, but all the information that should be nothing new is also uh, available yeah. on the website. We'll try to give you some tips and tricks uh, uh, on some sections and how do we see it happening, uh, but other than that, everything is indeed on our website. Just uh, another comment, we expect that today here uh, in the webinar we have both business incubators and startups, so you'll see that we'll try to address both uh, what requirements and what conditions are for the, those two types of um, uh, applicants. Okay. So, Copernicus Incubation Program, what is it about? <clears throat> well, fairly simple, very straightforward. It's a equity-free fund of 50,000 euro to boost a startup which is using Copernicus data, which is using Copernicus data or supporting Copernicus services. We will be able to award 20 startups per year with 50K and that over the next three years. So in total, this is a fund of about 3 million euro uh, for 60 startups that will be selected to be supported, to be incubated and to get this funding directly and they apply together with a uh, specific uh, incubation mm -hmm. center or incubation program. Now, just a couple of highlights. What do we hear from people that people see as an advantage of this program? Well, one is equity-free funding. 
I already mentioned this. Lead application procedure, also very important. We've done our, mo our best, utmost best to really make the program and the application process as lean as possible. There are some documents, there are some templates, of course, we need to get some information from you. Um, but we try to make it as simple as possible and also as rapid as possible. So we commit ourselves to a very rapid evaluation uh, process, which we will deal more into detail uh, later on. There's an attractive payment scheme, more about that later. What also people find very interesting is that salary cost is one of the eligible costs. So you can pay your own salary. Don't uh, submit a proposal of 100% payment of salary because this is not really what we uh, are aiming for. But salary is definitely a cost that can be included as part of this uh, incentive scheme. And of course, it's complementary with other support programs. Yeah, which uh, we might explain a bit later again, but which means that you might use the other subsidy programs or other funding schemes of the European Commission to support your incubation. And it's not in conflict with this program, as long as you don't fund the same activity with two programs. Indeed. So, Zana, what are the startups that we are looking at? Okay. We're looking at startups that are not older than five years. That's the basic precondition. Um, and we're looking at two different maturity stages. First of all, we look at the startups that are at the very early incubation stage, just established or about to be established, and want to develop their proposition into a working product or the first prototype. Uh, so that's one case uh, or one type of objective where you can use your incubation support funding. And the other type of maturity would be uh, startups in a later incubation stage. You might have your working product already, but you need to improve the competitive advantage. Maybe you need to add the additional functionality or feature, and you're ready to scale and launch. Uh, then you can also use this program as a support team for your incubation. Yeah, I think interesting to mention also is that for business incubators, we believe that this is a program actually to recruit additional people, to find additional people and to find additional expertise. Yeah, but it doesn't exclude uh, the existing partners that are already in the, in the incubator. So it's both new and the existing. Indeed. And the application is actually something which is a joint application. This is quite important because on the dossiers, on the proposal that we will be reviewing, we will be reviewing the startup, mm -hmm. the potential, many other uh, elements, we will go more in detail, but also the support program. So it is a startup together with the support program that is uh, applying for this, uh, for this program. Yeah, which doesn't mean that you have to be incubated already, or it doesn't mean that the incubator has to incubate the startup before the application, but they have to have a preliminary agreement, or in case the funding is granted, then startup has an incubator where it will be kind of placed. Um, okay. What are the preconditions? I think also quite straightforward. Of course, you have to use Copernicus data. It needs to be Copernicus-based. This is the core of the program. We are looking for innovative and commercially promising business pro uh, propositions, so it should be, there should be growth potential. Uh, and actually, we are aiming for large growth potential. So, startups with international growth potential, this is really what we are looking after. So, startups that are covering a wider scope, a wider region, uh, rather than uh, a single uh, region-based uh, startup, I mean, yeah. this is uh, our preference to... Uh, to go large. Yeah, absolutely. So be ambitious and uh, make sure that you have a meaningful proposition with Copernicus data, that it's not some kind of a science thing or secondary thing, but it's really in the core of the proposition and it adds value or it makes your proposition stronger because of the Copernicus data and services. Okay. Some general requ requirements and uh, conditions. Um, you can get up to 50k uh, for your uh, funding, mm -hmm. um, but you should note that this is only 85% of the co total cost. So you need to, as a startup, you need to be looking for co-funding of minimum 15%. Now this 15% can come from almost anywhere. This can be your own funding, this can be uh, an incubation fund, this can mm -hmm. be venture capitalists, this can be friends, family. Uh, so whatever you uh, uh, want to find additional money, but we need to, to at least get 15% of the total cost uh, needs to be uh, needs to come from somewhere else. Yeah, and remember that here you can use also the other subsidy programs as a co-funding. Uh... Absolutely, indeed. The funding covers up to one year of uh, operations. Payment scheme, as we mentioned in the beginning, rather attractive because you get 50% pre-financing, and the uh, the remaining will be uh, delivered at the final uh, delivery. And uh, we aim to get an announcement uh, of four weeks after the submission uh, of your. Uh, 
uh, that you can get started and you actually can get the payments. Now, only one date to remember for the moment is 15th of March because this is the first deadline, but definitely not the last deadline because this is a program which is continuously open for the next uh, three years. And the dates of the, uh, uh, of the selection uh, moment have been defined already. You can find the details on the website. I'm not sure if you can read this on the slide here. Uh, so the first year we'll have three selection uh, board meetings and the second and the third year we've got four selection board meetings. So for the moment, only one date to remember, 15th of March, we're looking forward to your uh, submissions. We will select seven startups, at, um, or a maximum of seven startups, at the first selection. But don't worry, if you don't make the first selection, there are more to come. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, obviously not everyone will get granted with the funding in the, in the first selection round. But it doesn't mean that you cannot improve your application and apply again. Okay. So, application procedure. How does the details go? Zan. Okay. We're going to cover application procedures, the documents, the timeline, the eligible applicants, the eligible cost, and also some more details on the templates, some guidelines or some quick guidelines already. So let's start with the application requirements and the timeline. Mm -hmm. Okay, here you see a list of application documents that are required to be submitted uh, to apply for this funding. And you see two sections, one set is required from a startup and the other one from a support program. It looks like a long list of documents, but in fact it's broken up in a in uh, several short documents for the efficiency reasons uh, during the evaluation process. But in fact, what we ask from a startup and also from a support program, we ask a compliancy checklist, which asks for the very simple things that you can communicate in English, that you are based in one of the European Union countries, and that you agree with our terms and conditions, and those kind of things. So it's something that you check and sign. Uh, the second one for the startup is a startup uh, business pitch which can be delivered as a video pitch or a slide deck. Um, not an extensive uh, um, book to be written, but something that very sharply, in a concise way, uh, presents uh, your business proposition. I think it's an important point, because if you cannot present your starting idea in about 10 slides, then we believe there is still some work to be done. So it needs to be sharp. It needs to be sharp for yourself to make sure that there is a clear idea, a clear project, but also sharp for the evaluators that will be reviewing many of the applications. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, then we have the number three, that's the funding request uh, application, where you present uh, why do you need the funding and how are you going to spend it. Uh, some tables to be filled in, some numbers, some cost positions, which obviously have to be in line with the eligible uh, cost positions as defined in the program. And number four is a, is a more open, it's support document. First of all, we expect to have uh, some CVs. Who is in your team? Who are you? What are your profiles? And if there is anything else you think could complement your application and explain your case better, please feel free to add. From the support program, um, as I explained, we also request a compliance checklist, which also include, includes the support letter, where the support program, meaning the incubator, yeah, when we talk support program, we mean incubator, um, provides a commitment to incubate the startup. And then the second material is the general information material. You might have already some kind of brochure or some kind of presentation material explaining the activities of the incubator, like what services are available, uh, what is the operational model, where it's located, and uh, how does it work, and what's the track record uh, of, uh, of activities, like how many startups have been incubated, and, uh, and what are the results. Application selection. Yeah, so um, we, have, uh, oh, we, we are going to organize the selection and evaluation in two rounds. In the first round, it's a document check. It's a check of all the application documents you will submit. Uh, we aim to select maximum 14 applicants for the second round. And in the second round, we will invite uh, the applicants for a live interview on a WebEx platform to pitch their business proposition and answer the questions of experts. Um, so in fact, the support program, meaning the incubator, will be evaluated in the first stage. And that's uh, a very important block of the evaluation as well. It, uh, it will constitute one third of the evaluation results. And in the second round, where the interview happens and the business pitch on the WebEx platform happens, we will look at the, the proposition and how the, the use of uh, Copernicus data and services is done or expected to be done and what, uh, what's the strength of the business proposition and uh, basically why do you need the funding and how relevant is that. Okay. And how should people submit the application? 
Okay, yeah, we have created a, a dedicated place where the applications can be submitted and uh, where the, the security is high and it's a, a confidential space uh, for you to feel safe about the information you submit. So when you go on the, the website, openxincubation.eu, how to apply, you will find a, a section to register yourself as a new user to get a dedicated space where you can upload your documents. Mm -hmm. And normally you should get a confirmation. So if you don't get a confirmation, something has gone wrong, and then please uh, contact us. Yeah. By the way, I think it's the first time that we show the URL on the screen. Actually, this website is also the website where you can find all the information that we are been talking about. Yeah. Now, eligible applications and criteria. What are the criteria specifically for startups? Okay, so we are looking uh, for all kinds of startups out there. As I said, maximum five years since legal registration, but it doesn't have to be a legally registered startup necessarily at the moment of the application. Uh, you can have an intention to register and you can be a team of entrepreneurs. In uh, this program, we will accept um, teams that have at least two people and two complementary profiles in a team. And obviously, if the team, which is not registered yet, get the grant, they will need to register themselves as a legal entity to sign the contract and get the grant eventually. All kinds of other startups are also eligible, uh, uh, also university and research institutes spin out the course, corporate spin out and even the venturing teams in large companies with an intention to be uh, uh, spinned out. As long as there is an intention to set up a legally uh, uh, legal independent, no. independent company. Yeah, okay. absolutely. The targeted status startups, what are we really looking for? We're looking for, uh, for meaningful propositions, meaning that there is a real problem in market, there is a real customer need that can be solved with the proposition, and that fit is really clear that you have to find a solution that has a chance in market because it solves the real problem and adds value to customers or a certain customer group. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, Copernicus data and services they have to be in the core of the proposition. They have to add the meaning, meaningful value. Uh, and we're looking for strong teams, the new champion teams. Uh, uh, so that's why also in the second round of evaluation, we would like to see the team mm -hmm. uh, interacting with experts. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is a question many people are asking us. So what, what is the best profile? What are the best companies? Which are the best incubation centers? And so on and so on. Actually, we don't have a preference on, on that. And we actually always say that we are looking for the most promising proposals really looking for the most promising teams that really can set up a company, grow a company uh, that becomes meaningful and has a meaningful use of Copernicus data or services. Mm -hmm. Now we have to ask for a couple of compliance criteria. There are lists where people need to tick that is uh, okay, that they're compliant. Maybe you want to elaborate a little bit on that, Sam? Yeah, I want to say that we have made it simple uh, for you, for both uh, business incubators and startups. We're not asking for any copies or official statements from a bank or uh, the company register. We're asking for a word of honor that is signed. Uh, and then, obviously, if there is some kind of need to ask for a copy, that can be done. But at the moment of publication, we ask for, a, for your signature uh, to approve that you comply with the requirement in the program. Mm -hmm. And some quality criteria, I think these are also the, uh, the weight on the evaluation, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there are three blocks, and each of them uh, having one-third of weight. So the first block is on the uh, use of Copernicus uh, data and services, and there we would like to see that there is a, a relevant use of Copernicus data and services in the business proposition. We also want to see that your team has a competence or experience or ability to work with Copernicus data or services, that you can do what you promised to do, and that there is technical feasibility. We have that it's possible actually to get it done. The second block is, uh, is about the commercial strengths. It's about the strengths of the business proposition. And there, obviously, your team comes in the picture, and second of all, the business pitch itself. And we ask you to prepare the business pitch uh, based on the NABC methodology that is explained uh, shortly on the slide, but we also explain it on our website. We even have prepared a, a brochure material explaining what are the key questions to prepare a business pitch based on this methodology. Um, it's a simple methodology, four basic questions. What is the market need or what is the customer need? Uh, what is your approach, your innovative uh, approach to solve the problem? What is the added value? What is the benefit to the customer and to your investors? 
And lastly, what is your competitive advantage? What are the alternatives and why are you better than those alternatives? And then the last part, yep. actually the evaluation of the business incubator itself. Yeah, absolutely. Focusing on the, on the scope and the strength of the, of the support services. Track record is an important element because this is the way how we can see how, how strong that the incubation uh, support is or the acceleration support and then of course the ability and the motivation why you're uh, as an incubator or accelerator program supporting this, uh, the, the, this proposal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then there are also a couple of criteria uh, for the uh, support programs and actually you will see that no, this is not the one what I wanted to mention. Which are the specific uh, uh, support programs? Actually, all types of support programs are eligible here. We don't see any specific that is not eligible. So this can be governmental, can be university incubator or accelerator. Uh, it can be private, it can be research institute, corporate business, corporate venturing, we've already been mentioning, uh, or even other uh, uh, support programs providing support to uh, startups. Yeah, I think the last point is very important that, uh, in fact, they're looking for organizations that support incubation services or support startups during their incubation. And it doesn't matter what's the name. Sometimes those programs are even called accelerators or, uh, or any other names. Uh, but, in fact, the name doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The operational model matters. I think it should be clear that within this program, although we call it Copernicus Incubation, we don't provide the incubation itself. The startup needs to find the incubator, or you as an incubator needs to provide the incubation support, and we will actually provide the funding uh, to fund that. So I uh, just want to get this possible confusion uh, out of the world that we uh, support the program, and you need to find the, the, the incubation program yourself. Um, and a couple of basic uh, compliance and quality criteria, uh, which is actually rather uh, simple, rather straightforward, is that uh, we require a support letter from uh, the incubation program, why you are supporting uh, the startup, why you support this venture. And this, we call it reasons to believe. What are the reasons that you believe in this? Of course, if you've got a more formal evaluation process, which I assume most of you have, feel free to submit also this evaluation process. Uh, or this evaluation report. If the company's report is uh, incubated in your uh, in e program, then the standard uh, material that you already have, you can use as a support letter. Mm -hmm. And all these documents are available uh, on our website. There is a subsection how to apply, and all the document templates are available uh, there. Mm -hmm. And there is also a simple template uh, for the compliance, and I think this is also related to you should be able to speak English and a couple of uh, other straightforward criteria. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing uh, complex over there. Now let's go to the money part. This is what many people are looking for. What are the eligible costs? What kind of costs can you bring in this program to be funded, Sana? Yeah, uh, you can see on the screen uh, the long list of the costs. Interesting to mention that uh, salary costs are included. As you see the last point um, on, uh, on the list. Um, costs paid to the support program, meaning the incubator, are not eligible. That's very important to understand because often there is some money that you have to pay uh, to the incubator uh, where you're incubated. You see office space being in both lists, but in fact there is a simple explanation. If you have to pay some fee for the office space to your incubator, then it's not eligible. If it's to another party, then it's eligible. So it's a bit uh, a twisted uh, uh, definition here, but uh, it goes back that the incubator cannot receive the money that comes from this program. Mm -hmm. And then other costs, you can see them all on the list here. Borrowing costs, business consultancy services, website, promotion uh, material, employee-related costs. I mean, all on the list, and the list can be uh, much longer than, than this. So, yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, the, the list most likely is not longer, but there are a lot of sub-activities uh, yes. in each category. Yes, and that's what you've been doing, yeah. yeah. So but it's, it's kind of uh, all types of activities that are directly related to your business development and uh, to that incubation stage. Um. Yeah. So this eligible cost is actually for the uh, 50K. Mm -hmm. Then there's also some eligible co-funding, and this is about the 15% uh, that you uh, should find yourself. And you will see this is actually the same. The same list, yeah. Same list, indeed. Exactly the same. Now, list. the only comment here is that uh, the co-funding, that 50% you have to bring in or chip in yourself, it cannot be in kind. If you get somebody saying, okay, I'll chip in with uh, office space or with some services, uh, uh, those 15%, that's not eligible. It has to be cash. 
Okay, I think this covers quite a lot on the program which is eligible and so on. Uh -huh. So let's spend a little bit more time on the application templates, uh, some guidelines that we have, uh, what people should be filling in and some of our recommendations. And let's start with this video pitch which we think is new and we actually are looking forward to see lots of videos because we believe that this is a nice way uh, to present yourself, to present the team and no, we are not looking for a professional marketing video. I mean, use your uh, mobile phone to record yourself, to actually uh, talk about what you want to talk about, what you want to show us. Um, because we believe this will be carrying on much more message that we want to see, that we want to hear, than only a uh, presentation. Yeah, and keep it short, three to five minutes, don't make any long movies for us. And as Sam said, don't uh, put effort into making them uh, anything professional. It can be really a homemade, uh, easy, simple movie. We also don't limit how you are going to make it or produce it. We only give you a guideline what has to be in that video, which in, uh, you see the five uh, bullet points on the slide as a guideline what to include in the story. And obviously that team is important, we already mentioned the business, business proposition according to the NABC is important, stage of maturity is important, and why you need the funding is also a very important question. Important remark, not more than three to five minutes. We will not be able to review videos that are 20 minutes, 50 minutes, uh, so keep it short, keep it concise. Now, if you don't want to make a video, which we perfectly understand and accept, you still can make a slide deck uh, presentation. And also there, a couple of similar uh, recommendations, like present the team, present the data service, a business proposition. I think these are all the same criteria. Yeah. And there we, we aim for about 10 slides. So don't go over that, uh, otherwise there will be too much information. Yeah. In fact, the difficulty of the exercise is not so much uh, producing uh, those numbers of slides or five minutes of uh, video, but really make your messages sharp and in a very concise way. Mm -hmm. And then to help you, we've also provided some pitch preparation support material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can uh, you can find it on our website um, under the subsection media. And I think we also have it on the how to apply at the bottom of the page. Uh, so just use it as an inspiration. It's not a formal guideline. It's not a mandatory guideline. But it is it is there to help you to to prepare your pitch, to plan the messages, uh, to answer the right questions. Mm -hmm. And then we are communicating already uh, about the uh, incubation program, as you've been seeing, because you are in this uh, webinar, which we're very happy with, so we assume that you learned about this over Twitter or Facebook or through our newsletter. <coughs> newsletter is something that we will keep on using to inform you on updates, on new application dates, on new deadlines that are coming, or follow the, uh, the, the Twitter, the Facebook, and the LinkedIn channel uh, to stay up to date on what is happening, uh, what is new, and later on also on what are the successful uh, yep. cases that we have been Absolutely, selecting. Yeah. And then a specific question to the business incubators that are today in the uh, audience. We also are looking for your support and your help to get in, in, in contact with your startups. Uh, and there we've got uh, some communication material available that you can uh, download, I think, already, or you can also ask us the questions so we can help you with the promotion uh, to spread this message and to uh, so that you can get uh, in the best way possible uh, the benefit of this program. Yeah, so absolutely. Get in contact with us. Uh, we're happy to have a discussion how we can uh, work together uh, to spread the word. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think this brings us to the last slide, which is an uh, open slide. An open slide for questions. Um, we can maybe put on the microphones uh, if you have a question, or if maybe also uh, you can just type your question in the chat box. And I will be looking at uh, Alexander, who's also joining us, to see if there are any questions coming in. Uh, we can put people live on the phone, or any questions already? Yep, uh, we have a couple of questions so far. Uh, of course, people can also feel free of these questions to unmute themselves and ask it uh, themselves. But the first question that came in was from uh, Marcelo Maranesi. Uh, our startup is already undergoing an incubation program after public ITTT process. Uh, now we are at month four of 18. Would the money from this incubation program be eligible for the Copernicus incubation co-funding? Uh, normally, yes. I don't know what is ITT or uh, that program, but normally, yes. There is no limitation uh, on uh, how to combine different subsidy programs. Just make sure that uh, you justify the use of different fundings for uh, different activities. So there is a clear uh, uh, explanation that they don't overlap. Yeah, it's an invitation to the by the way. Okay. okay. 
Um, and then the second question which we got was, uh, is it necessary that startup and support program are at the same location or can they be in different cities? They definitely can be in different cities, but we of course want to be sure that the startup is being supported in a proper way. So if you're far from each other, you'll have to explain also how you will be uh, supporting each other. Yeah, how will you work I don't know, on a virtual platform? Uh, and as long as you can explain that. Uh... Yeah, we're not bound to any location, any incubation center. Um, so absolutely, this is not really an uh -huh. issue. Any other questions coming in already? So far, not. Okay. Uh, then we uh, let's see on the audio. If there's somebody that uh, is, uh, has another question, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask us the question just uh, over the phone. Uh, we have still a couple of moments, a couple of minutes uh, to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. um, there's another question that came in over the chat, which is what about uh, reporting requirements during the funding period? That's a good question. Um, Zana, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, we will provide templates uh, to report, but we are not, they are not going to be any longer documents to be filled in. But obviously you will have to provide uh, uh, some report on how have you spent the money, especially the pre-financing, uh, which is 50% of the total fund. Um. Mm -hmm. Maybe also interesting to uh, add to this is that the money will be paid to the startup uh, itself. So we don't pay the money to the incubation programs. However, we want the incubation programs to sign off the reports bit by bit by the startups. Yeah, not formally sign off, but uh, we want some uh, some kind of check by the business incubators uh, to be done. Okay. Other questions coming in? Other questions of people that want to unmute and let their voice hear? Then I think we've been clear. We have recorded this session, uh, so we will make this uh, available on the website. All the information is also available on the website. Uh, and if after all of this is still, things are not clear, there is still the uh, contact uh, on the website. You can mail us, you can call us, and then we can uh, help you further as a startup or as an incubation center. Uh, we have uh, another question coming in. Sorry, Sam. Okay. Um, the first question is, can a company apply to Copernicus incubators before final registration, mm -hmm. uh, can the registration be done while, while in the accepti accepting process mm -hmm. uh, and uh, must 15% be spent within the first year? Okay, uh, three questions. Um, uh, on the first, uh, already two, I would say, uh, is no problem that uh, people are not a registered company at the moment of applying, but we need to have a registered company in order to be able to pay the advance payments. Uh, so registration can happen after the uh, approval uh, by this program, uh, and the sooner that you get this registration, the sooner you can get the money. And then I think this is answering the first two questions, and the third question was actually, the 50% uh, uh, in the first year. Uh, yes, indeed. All the costs uh, need to be spent in the first year. So. But in fact, uh, the first year, uh, the maximum of kind of, let's call it a project you can apply with, can be maximum one year. So it can also be six months, but it's maximum one year. So it's not the first year, it's one year is the maximum uh, you can run the activities uh, within this program. Okay. And another question that came in is, uh, are there any other options for a second team member, maybe a partner company? Um, so the question is to have a partner company or a second team member? Uh, in the first, Mark, to, to was saying that we need at least two complementary profiles. Um, mm -hmm. um, normally, it depends on uh, what kind of partner company do you have, but uh, we don't really uh, foresee applications from consortiums. Let's say that they are two different legal entities. Um, uh, coming together. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then another question is uh, how does the funding of the Copernicus incubator and other funding programs match together? For example, is it compatible with ESAPIC funding? Mm -hmm. There's a question that we've also had a couple of times, and yes, it is compatible with uh, ESA big funding. Um, what we're looking there is specifically for applicants that have a challenge with the current ESA big, uh, big funding. For example, some people, uh, the real uh, ESA big funding need to be at a specific location. This uh, funding is incubation, uh, sorry, is location free. So in that sense, it's complementary. Uh, uh -huh. Absolutely. Okay. That's it for now. So another couple of questions coming in, Alexander. Nothing yet. Nothing. 
then uh, I think we have come then at the end of the uh, session and rest with us only to thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, we hope everything has been clear. Uh, and as I said before, if there are still questions, I'm sure you, you will be able to find us. And we also count on you to spread the word on this uh, program. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, hope to hear from you uh, in the very soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to your application. Thank you. Goodbye Bye. for now. Bye.